it's time for the whole nine yards. Hello again, everyone. I'm Ralph Ventry, ready to go for week three of Northeast Conference football. We'll get our last taste of conference play until October. Duquesne is on a bye. All seven other NEC members are active this week. Let's run down the slate in the opening drive. Bryant comes off a key Northeast Conference victory over rival Sacred Heart and steps up to the FBS for the first time in program history. Chris Merritt and the Bulldogs are heading to Akron, Ohio. Now we're going to a, an FBS program with a, that's getting better and better by the year in, in a very solid conference in the MAC conference. And, and uh, to play in that stadium for them, uh, I think it's going to be a, a lot of fun for them. You know, and, and in this type of a game, this type of a situation, just got to turn it loose. Go out there, have fun, make plays, fly around, do the best you can, and uh, let, let uh, things take care of itself from there. The Bulldogs' defense turned it loose in week two against Sacred Heart limiting the NEC preseason favorite to only 11 first downs and keeping them out of the end zone, the Bulldogs' defense will need an encore if they have hopes of an FCS over FBS upset in Week 3. We have plenty of Merrimack talk lined up for later in the show, but we'll start with the Warriors' Week 3 matchup, Merrimack goes from defeating the Patriot League preseason favorite in Week 2 to facing CAA member Maine this Saturday. I'll be tracking two young Warriors during the Maine game. Jakari Carter went for 100-plus receiving yards at Holy Cross. And NEC Rookie of the Week, Running back Victor Dawson broke the 100-yard rushing barrier. Let's see if they can keep it rolling up in Maine. LIU completes its run through a season-opening three-week gauntlet when the Sharks invade Miami of Ohio. It'll be LIU's third consecutive step up to the football bowl subdivision. There were moments during last week's game at West Virginia when the Sharks' defense slowed the Mountaineers' rushing attack. WVU managed only 3.6 yards per carry for the game. Sacred Heart steps out of conference to host Morgan State and former NFL running back Tyrone Wheatley. Wheatley is the Bears head coach, and he brings an 0-2 team to Fairfield. Meanwhile, Mark Nofri's pioneers fell at NEC rival Bryant one week after blanking Bucknell in their home opener. The pioneers were without consensus All-American running back Julius Chestnut at Bryant, but that did not stop SHU's defensive stars from shining. DeAndre Bird was all over the field once again, making 12 stops for a Pioneers defense that has kept the opposition out of the end zone in seven of eight quarters this season. Also happening in the Nutmeg State on Saturday, Central Connecticut meets Southeastern Louisiana. CCSU broke into the win column in last week's NEC opener at Wagner. Now the Blue Devils face the reigning Walter Payton Award winner, quarterback Cole Kelly and the Southeastern Lions. Few FCS teams have found a way to stop Kelly and the Lions' high-flying passing attack, but CCSU's defense showed itself capable of pressuring the opposing passer last week at Wagner. Kelvin Apari and Jaleel Brown combined for 25 tackles in the win. Apari had two sacks and a QB hurry. 
now it's off to Loretto for the NEC Game of the Week on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. Wagner looks to even its NEC record at 1-1 one one when it visits St. Francis. The Red Flash will contest their first conference game since November 2019, and this one will feature some premier defensive talent up front. First, for the host Red Flash, young D lineman Donnell Brown has combined for four tackles for a loss in SFU's first two games at Eastern Michigan and Delaware. For Wagner, sophomore lineman Andre Crawley was a standout against CCSU with two sacks and a QB hurry. This game could be decided up front. Watch to see how it all shakes out. ESPN app, 12 noon Eastern on Saturday. Paul Dettino, Rashid Marshall, and John Schmelk on the call. Now let's check in on the NEC stock market. I will tell you whose value is on the rise. At 6'5", 235 pounds, he looks like a quarterback, and he's playing like a darn good one. Merrimax Weston Elliott is a grad transfer who appeared in 12 games for Louisiana Tech over the past four years, but now he's settled in nicely in North Andover, Mass. In two starts, Weston Elliott has completed 77% of passes and thrown for seven touchdowns. He averages 330 pass yards per game. His name is Weston Elliott, and his stock is on the way up. I'm calling my Twitter timeout. We stay with the Merrimack Warriors for this week's featured tweet. Merrimack manhandled nationally ranked Holy Cross in week one. Dan Kern's Warriors, who are in their third season of reclassification from the Division II ranks, well, they loudly announced their FCS arrival with that landmark victory. Merrimack led by as many as 21 points in the eventual 35-21 win. The Mac made nine more first downs than Holy Cross and outgained the Crusaders by more than 100 yards. Warriors head coach Dan Curran was a guest on the Noontime Sports Podcast to speak on the significance of the victory. So give it a listen, Coach Curran, on the Noontime Sports Podcast at Noontime Sports on Twitter. That's amazing. Duquesne's victory over Mac member Ohio was so amazing that Stats Perform named the Dukes it's FCS Team of the Week. The Dukes didn't only win in Athens, they controlled the tempo. The Dukes piled up 26 first downs during the game, 11 more than Ohio managed. Duquesne chewed up more than 41 minutes of clock while matriculating the ball up and down the field. The Dukes' defense kept Ohio out of the end zone for the entire second and third quarters. The Dukes went toe-to-toe -to -toe against an FBS program and emerged victorious. Hey, Duquesne, stats amazing. Now let's take a quick trip into the NEC football chop shop. I sat down with NFL Draft Bible's Rick Saratella earlier in the week. Al Fentry here with Rick Saratella of NFL Draft Bible. And it's time for the NEC Football Chop Shop. Rick, let's get right to work. I know you want to talk about three individuals who popped off the screen from week two from your film session. And then you'll pre matchup between. Well, what do you got from week two? 
Ralph, it's time for the chop shop. Let's get into it. I'm going to start off with Central Connecticut State senior linebacker, Kelvin. That's Amore Apare. He had a big, big day, 10 tackles, including four tackles for loss, two big sacks in that 21-19 win over Wagner there out on Staten Island, New York, during those 9-11 pregame ceremonies. Hearts were heavy. Hits were hard. Kelvin Apare flashing that athleticism, the bend, the dip around the edge. I really like what I saw. Really great strength. I mean, a couple of plays here, Ralph. He's just tossing guys out of his way through two games, 15 tackles, including four and a half tackles for loss, which currently leads the Northeast Conference. Kevin Apare is a name you need to know. All right, so you start with a Central Connecticut defensive player. Now I think we're going to keep it on defense. Who else impressed during the week two slate? Yeah, a lot of standouts here in the NEC during week two. We're going to keep it on the defensive side for this next one. It's the Birdman. Watch out. DeAndre Bird for your defending NEC champion, Sacred Heart. The senior linebacker, Ralph, he just flew onto my radar. Uh, pun intended, right? Because I did not know much about DeAndre Bird until this game. But he was all over the field, showing the lateral movement, sideline to sideline coverage, 12 tackles on the day including one behind the line of scrimmage uh, for a blow-up play in the backfield, a big pass breakup uh, in a losing effort against Bryant. But the Birdman, DeAndre Bird, he looks like a safety. He moves around very well. He hits like a linebacker, and he's really made a name for himself. In fact, going back to the spring season in his past six games, he now has 37 tackles, and DeAndre Bird is somebody here that we're going to continue to monitor. Okay, Central Connecticut's Kelvin Apare, Sacred Hearts' DeAndre Bird, two defensive studs from week two. Let's go to the other side of the ball, Rick. Who do you have on offense? Yeah, we had to get one of the offensive players in here, Ralph. And is there really any other choice but to dip into the Duquesne wishing well of the 28-26 upset over Ohio? And Cyrus, I want to hold her hand, is making big plays for the Dukes. And he's a big lengthy wide receiver that Cyrus Holder, the transfer coming over from conference rival St. Francis now making a name for himself with the Dukes four catches, 55 yards, his second consecutive game going over 50 yards. He leads the team in receiving and he's got incredible length. He can play above the rim. He goes vertical. You got to love the big catch radius that's what quarterbacks at the next level love with cyrus holder nfl scouts are going to be keeping a close eye on this young man all right well we went down the individual honor roll now it's time to focus on what's ahead in week three the prime matchup on the espn app wagner at saint francis how do you see this one rick yeah we got a clash of two northeast conference Rivals and Wagner at St. Francis, this one in Loretto, Pennsylvania. It's going to be on at noon Eastern. Two teams looking for their first win here. Wagner coming off that close loss to Central Connecticut State a week ago. Look out for the defense. They had 10 tackles for loss, including five sacks. And they're going to be led by that linebacker defensive line hybrid, Titus Leo. Uh, I had a chance to go into Wagner earlier this summer. Titus Leo has NFL size. Ralph, he kind of looks like Bruce Smith playing that seven technique in the four-point stance coming off the edge. Titus Leo is a problem, and St. Francis is going to have their work cut out for them. They also come off two tough defeats, almost pulling out the upset against Eastern Michigan, losing a close one to Delaware a week ago. I'm going to keep an eye on this Katero Summers who's leading the Northeast Conference in receiving currently with the, with the quarterback, Jiren Russell, running for a buck 35 on the ground. Katero Summers doing it through the air. They got the dual threat quarterback, the big play wide receiver. I'll give you my prediction. I'm going to go with the home team. I think St. Francis pulls out a close one in Loretto this Saturday. And you can watch that game live on ESPN3 on the ESPN app. Paul Dottino on the play-by-play -play for that one. 
As for us here in the NEC Football Chop Shop, that's all we have this week, but we'll be back again next week. So tune in. Thanks for watching. He's Rick Saratella. I'm Ralph Ventry. See you again soon. And that's all I have for today's show. As always, I thank you for watching the whole nine yards. Go forth and enjoy another week of Northeast Conference football. I'm Ralph Ventry for NEC Front Row. See you next week.